I'm guessing you've got some sky marks on your driver, don't you? It's okay, it happens to the best of us. It happens to me a lot as well, especially when training for attack angle and certain long drive, I have skied a lot of balls. Uh, in today's video, we're gonna clean up our drivers, get them polished, make them look as nice as we possibly can. This is obviously gonna go uh, and apply for all of your woods in the bag. So hybrid, five wood, seven wood, three wood, whatever, and all of your drivers. So first things first, let's clean up our grips on the drivers. First, because uh, like we talked about in my last video with irons, having a clean set of grips is very important. So we're just gonna take our bucket of soapy water, uh, any dish soap will work, get a microfiber cloth and give the grip a rub down from top to bottom. Doesn't need to be soaking wet, just enough to get any of the grime off. And once that dries, we're gonna get the tackiness back that you once had with a brand new grip. Take any sort of towel and just with your palm, give it a touch like that. You don't need to rub this in to dry it off. That's gonna be plenty enough. And then I have another towel that I just set on the ground so that the grip has something to sit on instead of the grass. So let's clean the rest of these grips. We'll time lapse it and then we'll get into how we clean up the heads. We're going to start things off with this driver because it's a little bit different. All of my other drivers have a glossy top finish. This one here is matte. So if you have a matte finish, we don't really want to touch that with too much polish. Um, and they're going to be way less prone to getting scratches anyway. So um, what we're going to see further into the video is only going to apply for glossy head drivers. So let's take a quick closer look at this Callaway XR16 5 degree head. See what it looks like now. We'll clean it up and look at it after. Okay, so here is a closer look at the head of the Callaway XR16 matte finish top. Not too much for damage or scratches or anything on the top. As you can see, my miss with this club is definitely catching it low on the face, so we're gonna clean up those marks right there. All right, super straightforward for this club. There's really not much to this one. We're gonna do the same as the irons. We're gonna hit the glass cleaner onto the face of the club. And then we're gonna take our microfiber cloth. Make sure it's a microfiber. Don't just grab paper towel because that has a little bit of abrasive nature to it, whereas the microfiber is very, very soft. So we're just gonna rub that. You might need a little bit of pressure depending on how dirty the golf balls you've been hitting are, what sort of surface scratches there are. So give it a little bit of elbow grease. Let's show you the face of the club, what it looks like now and then we'll move into our glossy top drivers. So there's our face now, after just a little bit of glass cleaner. No more heavy marks, you can see right around there on the low toe side, we've got a small scuff, but very, very minor. So that's looking good, we'll put this club away and move on to the next. All right, so next club I grabbed is the Crank Formula 11 LD. This is my four degree head. Uh, I never hit this club anymore now that I have that Callaway. I'll do a full what's in the bag and talk through on my drivers and what I hit and what I don't hit. But this is my first long drive club. And back when I started, I had a negative attack angle, which means I was coming in super steep on the ball. Uh, so that's why we see we've got a lot of sky marks at the top of this driver. So we'll zoom in on the camera again and uh, see how much better we can make this look. And see when I hold it this way, quite a lot of scratching on those skied balls right at the top. When I first started hitting this, obviously I only had access to go into a driving range. So I was hitting range balls, which are super scuffed up and muddy. So when you do miss them, they are pretty detrimental. We have a couple different polishes, a couple different polish pads, and we have our 3M gun. Now you can do this with hand tools, obviously just some microfiber and that same level of polish. Here's the polish that I'm using right there. You can use realistically any. You want a cutting compound and then a finishing compound. All right, so we're gonna start off with this white uh, compound. It's just a rubbing compound. If you're looking for whatever polish, just go and get a medium cut. You definitely don't want anything super gritty uh, for golf clubs. Uh, this is just um, like a car polish. Um, so if you go to your local auto store or, oh my Jennifer, that is so much. Okay, that came out flying. So don't use nearly as much as what I just put on there. 
that is an issue. Okay, we're gonna actually try and save some of that for the next club. So I'm just gonna put that on a towel right there. Okay, we'll fix that in post, don't worry about it. So anyway, like I was saying, medium cut compound, we're gonna start with that with the medium cut pad. And then once that is done, we're gonna wipe it off with the microfiber and then we'll do our finishing cut. So we'll grab our club. Um, you do wanna wet this pad down a little bit, like get your hand damp and just spray some water onto this pad so it's not totally dry. And then whatever position's comfortable, just kind of hold that, brace it, and start with patting it around the top of the driver head. And then we'll start cutting it in. You want to apply even pressure and make sure that the polish pad stays level. Like you don't want to put it on an angle like this to try and get it because that's going to rub too much into the into the metal and uh, create its own scratches, which we want to avoid. So that's our first cut done. We're going to take our microfiber and wipe off this polish like the Karate Kid little wax on wax off action. So we're just going to do that and get our polish off. And that is already looking just worlds better. We've got all of that polish off now, so we are gonna do our finishing compound. So that is gonna be a way higher grit, so less gritty um, compound. And that's just gonna give it a little bit of extra shine and take out any of the uh, minute scratches that came from that starting compound. All right, I just watched that back and I turned on the speech enhancement thing on, I just got the, man, I am, it's not my day with the polish so far. Ugh. That is so frustrating. All right, we'll fix that in post as well. <laughs> um, turn on the speech enhancement on that last thing so that you could try and hear me while I was talking while this thing was spinning. And I got the new Pixel 7 yesterday and it's shocking how good quality that came out. So um, yeah. Okay, so we've got a new polish pad. Um, you don't want to use the same pad or the same microfiber on the last level of cut polish, just because then you're kind of defeating the purpose. You're rubbing the old compound in with the new. So you want to have a fresh pad or fresh microfiber. We're going to grab our club again here now that we've got our finishing compound on our finishing pad. Start with just blotching it over to get even distribution again. I used way too much again because it just spilt on me. I got to be more careful with that. All right. So now that's done. We've got a microfiber. I'm using the same microfiber that I wiped off last time, but I'm going to fold it so that I'm not using the same area so that the polish doesn't, again, like I said, kind of cross-contaminate, if you will, I guess. So we're gonna wipe that off now. And I used way too much polish, so it kinda came out hot on me. It's looking very, very good. So let's do a little zoom in and show you the end result of this club. But as you can see, we have almost no more scratching on the top. There's one small chip right there, kinda at the high toe. Nothing I can do about that because it's literally got the paint missing. But overall, I think this club turned out really well. Let's move on to the next. This is a head I just picked up. It's the Epic Max LS in the nine degree, kind of just a practice head so I don't wear out the Rogue Triple Diamond. It's really not too, too bad. Couple sky marks, but uh, nothing a bit of polish can't fix. Let's get into it. We're back with our medium cut polish pad and the uh, polish that I spilt earlier. So we're just gonna tap that and apply that on there. And wow, I still have some left over. Let's time lapse it, and then we'll show you the finished product uh, when we're done. All right, so here's the finished product of the Epic Max. LS came out pretty nice. I'd say almost every scratch came out. There's one very small one right by that Callaway logo that didn't come out, but can't win them all. Let's move on to the next. Here's by far the worst club. It's the one I've owned the longest and have done the most training with. It's my Callaway Maverick. This is my first driver I got. That was a real club. Before this, I hit like a Nike Sasquatch. 
So that was where I was first training for all my attack angle changes. I went from negative four to plus 12, and naturally you're gonna sky a lot of balls in doing that process. So I don't have super high hopes for this club because it is in really, really rough shape, but let's uh, see what we can make happen with it. definitely took the most work but pretty happy with the end result I mean right there obviously at that one I actually skied a range ball with that had a bunch of mud on it so I was pretty frustrated when that happened because there's no coming back from that but I mean honestly a lot of the fine scratches have come out so this one turned out better than I thought other than that one main mark right there Last but certainly not least is going to be my Callaway Rogue ST Triple Diamond. This is my everyday daily driver head. Um, it is a matte top, so we're not going to hit that with any polish. We just have a little bit of markings on the face as well as that XR16. So we're just going to hit a little bit of glass cleaner. Be very careful if you're using these on woods. They have a metal brush side for the bristles. That's for irons. And then they have a little soft foam or I don't know what sort of material that is, but you're not going to want to use the uh, metal on any woods. So we're just going to go in a light circular motion. Make sure to keep that uh, little jabby boy away from the head as well. That could turn into a big problem. Okay, looks like that did the trick. That got out our marks. Now we have a fresh looking face. So that's going to be it for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you stuck around this far, if you don't mind, drop a like. Give me a comment down below. Let me know what other stuff you want to see or if uh, these tips and tricks worked for you. Uh, up next week, we have a what's in the bag video. So super stoked for that one. Going to walk everyone through the different shaft and head combinations I use for long drive and for golf. Uh, in the next few months, uh, when spring and summer start to roll in, we've got some trips planned, doing long drive uh, demos and exhibitions, as well as going to be doing some PLDA events. So if you guys want to subscribe to the channel, see some more long drive and golf content, that would mean a lot to me. So hit that subscribe button down below and much more stuff will be coming your way. Until next time, have a good one.